I don't know how you felt walking into this room, but whatever that may be, I sure know how I'd like you to feel when you walk back out. Just one word, grateful. Today, I'm going to show you why I have many reasons to be grateful. Grateful for where you're coming from, for where you are today, and for where you can be tomorrow. As you may have noticed by now, I'm not a normal person physically. The obvious would be I've got a missing arm and missing fingers. But there's more to that. My disability has never had really anything to do with my arms. The real challenge were my legs. Describe it, I was born on tiptoes, with my legs bent outwards, got missing bones, missing toes, and I would say half an ankle on either side. Obviously, when I was born, my parents were told I would never walk. So all this meant one thing, it wasn't going to be easy. And I can tell you that it wasn't. Um, this meant that I had to go undergo a number of operations. My first birthday was supposed to be my lucky birthday, but um, it wasn't so lucky, and that was the first time I had my first operation. So from then on, I had to move from operation to operation, having five major operations in London. And I still remember the first time I was around eight years old, and went up to London, and we were supposed to spend just three weeks, and everything will be over. Just one procedure, and that's it. And I remember walking into hospital, and I saw this, this kid being, walk, being wheeled out on a wheelchair. And I immediately noticed he had this metal contraption around his leg. It looked like a torture chamber to me, with pins sticking out of everywhere. And I remember turning to my mom, and I'm like, that's not what's going to happen to me, right? And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. And not just once, but four times. So it was supposed to be just a three-week thing, ended up being a whole year, or four whole years. It wasn't just about the physical pain. It was obviously excruciating. I, had, I mean, my legs were being torn apart. It was cut in half, the muscles were stretched, all the nerves. I was on these painkillers every day, I wouldn't sleep. What was more than that? It was about the situation I found myself in. My life was sort of like a yo-yo going back and forth from one operation to the other. I missed out on my summer months, I missed out on school, and having to sit by the sideline, watching all my friends take part in sports, for example. And throughout all this, I was never guaranteed I would walk on my own two feet. So that brings me to the first reason to be grateful. Today, I can not only walk, but I can jog, I can run, and trust me, I can sprint. But um, that was just the beginning, just the first reason to be grateful. The real reason came about just a couple of years ago. I was always a fan of sports, but obviously I could never really take part. And that's when I was quite unexpectedly asked to give swimming a try. I'll never forget my first session. Funnily enough, I felt like a fish out of the water, although obviously I was in the water. <laughs> Um, so, I had to start from scratch, learning the basics, baby steps. So I started, you know, just training a couple of times a week, and then I ended up training every day, and even twice a day, and gym work in between, and juggling your fingers too. So to me, swimming has been a truly enriching experience. First of all, on a personal level, the satisfaction swimming has given me. And the reason for that is, Swimming has shown me that even though I've got a physical disability, you'd be amazed what you can achieve. My first major achievement was I, I swam the channel from Gozo to Malta. I competed at the national championships, and my fondest memory has been representing Malta at the world championships in Glasgow last year. That obviously, swimming has given me lessons I will carry forward in anything I do in life, from commitment, hard work, communication, and my two favorite lessons, patience and perseverance. But I'm grateful for something greater than just that personal satisfaction, that personal achievement. I'm grateful because it's given me a new outlook and perspective on life. 
I didn't know much about the Paralympic Games, but I followed London 2012, and that's where my, spark, my interest was sparked. The Paralympic Games means parallel to the Olympics. It's where every four years, the world's elite para-athletes compete for the honors. You'll find athletes who are born physically disabled, like myself, and those who unfortunately went through life-changing traumatic accidents. But the Paralympics is not just a competition. To me, it's, it's a source of inspiration, a source of inspiration to anyone who's bound to face challenges at one point in time or another. The Paralympics is living proof that you are the only one who can set limits. And as cliché as it might sound, ask yourself, is there really a dream too big? Now, having lived this firsthand, I can tell you, you'd be amazed at what the human body can do. Just look at this guy, Darko Durich. Now, this kid was abandoned at birth. Today, he's a European champion, he's a world champion, he's an Olympic swimmer. He's also a motivational speaker, and that I'm fortunate to say he's a good friend of mine. Beytullah Eroglu from Turkey. I mean, look at that. No arms, no problems. Also a European champion. This is a Michael Phelps of Paralympic swimming, Brazilian Daniel Diaz. He's basically got over more than 30 gold medals behind his name, and I can tell you he's got all the records imaginable. And he's even got a loving wife and kids. And that's where I met him in Glasgow. Now, the next person struck me. When I met him, it really struck me his story. Because the thing is, I'm sure you all know that South Africa is notorious for its great white sharks. So I think you can take a wild guess what happened to his leg. He was actually saving his brother, who was a lifeguard. And to save his brother, he got bit himself. And believe it or not, he turned the situation on its head. And today, he's not only an Olympic swimmer and a champion, but he's also an, a shark conservation ambassador. <laughs> so, um, um, I believe in powerful images. And as the saying goes, a picture speaks a thousand words. So the next couple of slides will definitely say a lot. But I can tell you that they're going to leave you speechless. I stopped at this picture for one reason. If you noticed, despite what they have or what they don't have, they're always smiling. Now, behind that smile, there will be tough times. Times when you ask yourself, why me? What am I doing here? What if? I think you should be asking yourself, why not? Think about these athletes and what they had to go through. What choice did they have, if any? On the one hand, pity themselves, be sorry for themselves, lock themselves up in their room. On the other hand, to see their ability in their disability, to work on their strengths, to push their limits beyond compare, to see the glass half full and not half empty, to show the world how it's done. Therefore, the Paralympics is a shining example of how impossible is nothing. 
So before I close, I'd like to share one more story. It's not always sunshine and glory. Even the most celebrated athlete of all time, Michael Phelps, had a rough patch. He was kicked off the USA swimming team and went into rehab. Although, trust me, he will be shining at in Rio this summer. But just like those pieces may fall apart, I believe everyone is capable of picking themselves up and putting them back together. Just look at Diana Niad. Now, her dream was to swim from Cuba to Florida. She tried, and she tried, and she tried. She failed five times. And on her sixth attempt, she made it at the age of 60. In fact, that's the first time she tries out, and that's when she was successful. So she never gave up. She didn't give in. She used her mental strength. So I hope to have shown you that there is no obstacle too high. There is no challenge too great. No dream too big. All you have to do is be grateful, dream big, stay humble, and the pieces will come together. Thank you.